Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today in this episode of Bitset Practice, we're going to be looking at previous year questions asked in chemistry from Bitsat 2018. This is another video based on chemistry questions and we're going to be looking at some very important questions in this episode. So let's look at our first question of this episode. On passing a current of 1 ampere for 16 minutes and 5 seconds through 1 liter of solution of CuCl2, all copper of the solution was deposited at the cathode. The strength of CuCl2 solution was here the molar mass of Cu is given as 63.5 and the Faraday constant is 96,500 coulombs per mole. So <clears throat> how do we solve this question? Well here we're going to have to apply Faraday's first law of electrolysis. So basically, it says that the number of equivalents, which can be equated as mass by equivalent weight, is equal to the charge in the charge in the given time period divided by the Faraday constant. So basically, mass divided by equivalent weight is equal to charge Q divided by 96,500 coulombs per mole. So over here, I equals 1 amperes and time period equals 16 minutes and 5 seconds. So that is 60 times 16, 0, 36, 1, that's also 0, and then 6 ones are 6, so 960. So 960 plus 5, so that is 965 seconds. So we can write Q as IT divided by 96500. So therefore the number of equivalents, that is M by E, is equal to 965 divided by 96500. So therefore the number of equivalents is equal to 1 divided by 100. So now we know the number of equivalents we can calculate the strength we can now calculate the normality of the solution which gives you the strength of CuCl2 so therefore the normality of the CuCl2 solution is number of equivalents divided by volume of the solution in liters. So over here the volume of the solution is one liters, one liter and then the number of equivalents we have already calculated that to be 1 by 100. So 1 by 100 divided by 1 so that is equal to 1 by 100 which is equal to 0 0.01 normal. So 0 0.01 normal is the strength of the given solution of CuCl2. So therefore option A, 0 0.01 normal is the correct answer. Let's look at the next question. A 100 ml dilute solution of Ag plus is electrolyzed for 15 minutes with a current of 1.25 milliamperes and the silver is removed completely. What was the initial concentration of Ag plus? So, how do we calculate this question? Well, first of all, the volume is given as 100 milliliters. So that is 100 divided by 1000 liters, which is 0 0.1 liters. So far, so good. Now here, the current is given as 1.25 milliampere. So therefore, I equals 1.25 milliamperes, which is 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 amperes. And then time is given as 15 minutes, which is equal to 15 times 60. That is equal to 900 seconds. So now we know the volume. 
the current and the time period in their standard units and let's find out the charge here so since I equals Q by T so therefore Q can be calculated as I times T so that is 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 900 so therefore you get 1.25 into 9 into 100 divided by 1000 so the two zeros get cancelled 1.25 into 9 is 11.25 divided by 10 that gives you charge is equal to 1.125 coulombs so the charge here is 1.125 coulombs now here in the question dilute solution of ag plus is electrolyzed for 15 minutes and the silver is removed completely so therefore the formula the equation that we should take here in electrolysis of ag plus is ag plus plus one electron gives you a silver atom <clears throat> now it is considered standard that one mole of electrons contain 96,500 coulombs of charge so over here in the electrolysis the charge is 1.125 coulombs so we need to find out the moles of electron passed through the circuit so moles of electron passed through the circuit so that is equal to the given charge 1.125 divided by the Faraday's constant that is 96500 so what we can do is we could you know multiply the numerator by a thousand and divide by a thousand so what you get is 1125 divided by 965 times 1 divided by 10 raised to 5 so now it's simple division of 1125 and 965 so 965 goes 1 times with 1125 so we'll subtract that 5 minus 5 is 0 12 minus 6 is 6 10 minus 9 is 1 and then that's a 0 so 160 so let's put a let's put a decimal there and then put a zero again if you were to multiply this by 2 you get 10 and then 12 plus 113 and then 18 plus 119 so that's way bigger than 1600 so we'll add a 1 here so 965 10 minus 5 is 5 9 minus 6 is 3 15 minus 9 is 6 and it's a zero so you have 6350 here and now what we can do is we can multiply 965 divided by I mean by 6 so you get 30 and then 6 6s are um, 36 plus 3 is 39 9 6s are 54 yeah 9 6s are 54 plus 3 is 57 so 5 um, <laughs> Yeah, so we can just multiply, we just add a 6 there, and then 5790, and then you can do some calculations in there. So we'll, we're will we going to stop right here, and so we'll write the number of moles passed through the circuit, number of moles of electrons passed through the circuit as 1.16 into 10 raised to minus 5 electrons. Now, since in the equation, Ag plus plus elect one electron gives you ag so moles of electron equals moles of ag equals moles of <clears throat> ag plus basically one mole of ag plus and one mole of electrons are required to form one mole of silver so therefore all of these have the number of moles as 1.16 into 10 raised to minus 5 
So that is the mol number of moles of electrons for an electron number of moles of electrons, number of moles of silver, and number of moles of silver ions. So, now we need to find the concentration of the initial silver ions. So, concentration can be expressed in molarity. So, molarity is a concentration term. Molarity equals number of moles of the given solute divided by volume of the solution in liters. So number of moles is 1.16 into 10 raised to minus 5 divided by the volume which we already calculated is 0.1 liters. So therefore you get 1.16 into 10 raised to minus 5 into 10. So 1.16 into 10 raised to minus 4 molar is the correct answer to the initial concentration of silver ions in this question. So the initial concentration of silver ions is option D, 1.16 into 10 raised to minus 4. So for that, first we found out the volume, the total volume, then we found out the charge flowing through the electrolysis process, and then we found out the number of moles of the electrons as well as silver, as well as silver ions. Then we use molarity, that's a concentration term, to find out the concentration of the init initial Ag plus ions. The concentration is 1.16 into 10 raised to minus 4 molar. Now, <clears throat> let's look at the next question. In electrolysis of water, a total of 1 mole of gas is evolved. You need to find out the amount of water decomposed. So, if you look at the raw equation of electrolysis, one mole of water gives you one mole of hydrogen plus half moles of oxygen. So, if we look at number of moles, let x be the number of moles of water, then you would notice that the number of moles of hydrogen gas would also be x, but the number of moles of oxygen gas will be x by 2. And since the total number of the total moles of gas is 1 that is evolved, so therefore x plus x by 2 is equal to 1, which is given in the question. So 3x by 2 equals 1, so therefore x equals 1 into 2 by 3, so that is 2 by 3. So the number, so the amount of water decomposed here is 2 by 3 moles, that is option D. So in a lot of concentration terms and calculations, it's imperative to know the equation beforehand so that you can solve these questions a lot easier. Next question. What is the freezing point of a 10% by weight solution of methanol, that is CH3OH, in water? Here the, um, the, uh, the cryoscopic constant is given that is minus 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. So how do we solve this question? So here it's given 10% by weight solution of methanol. So from here we can interpret that 10 grams of CH3OH is present in 100 grams of solution. So water constitutes 90 grams or 90% of the solution and the substance that is used here is methanol so therefore its molar mass so when you can calculate that so you have one carbon so that's 12 four hydrogen so that's four into one and then one oxygen so that's 16 so 12 plus 16 gives you 28 28 plus 4 gives you 32 so 32 grams is the molar mass now since we know, so, so now since with the percentage we found out the uh, mass of methanol that's present, we need to find out the number of moles of methanol. So number of moles of CH3OH here is 10 grams divided by 32 grams. So that is 5 by 16. So let's keep it as a fraction because it's easier to calculate. So now we need to find molality. So what is molality? 
Molality is number of moles of the solute divided by mass of the solvent in kg. So in kg means you have to divide it by a thousand. So 90 grams of water means 90 divided by a thousand kilograms of water. So on putting in the values, you will get 5 by 16 as the number of moles of the solute. Divide that by 90 and then multiply by 1000. So you can take 16 down to the denominator. So 5 into 1000 divided by 16 into 90. So, so one of the zeros get cancelled here. And you can multiply the remaining terms. To, so you'll get 500 divided by... 69's are and 6 are 54, 104 is 4, <clears throat> let's do that again, 160 is 16 times 10 minus 16, so 10 minus 6 is 4, Six. so 5 minus 1 is 4, and then there's a 1, so you have 144 as the denominator. So now what you're going to do is you're going to divide 500 by 144. So when you take 144 three times, so you get 4 threes are 12, 4 threes are 12 plus 1 is 13, 4 three and 1 threes are 3 plus 1 is 4. So 432 and then 10 minus 2 is 8, 9 minus 3 is 6 and then there's a 0. So then you put a point, you get 680, and then you just need to, when you add 144 to 432, so that gives you 6, 7, 5, so 576. That is close enough to 680 because if you were to, over, to add 144 to this, then you'll overshoot the value, so therefore 576. Then 10 minus 6 is 4, 7 minus 7 is 0. 6 minus 5 is 1, so that's 104. Let's put in a 0 there, so you have, let's try 144 times 7 here. So 7 fours are 28, 7 fours are 28, plus 2 is 30. 1, one seven is a 7, 7 plus 3 gives you 10. So you have 1, double zero, 8 here, so you get 32, so that's the remainder. So the molality of the given 10% solution of methanol is approximately 3.47 molal. So now we know the molality, we just need to find out the change, the depression in freezing point. So delta Tf is the depression in freezing point, the difference. So that is Kf, that is the cryoscopic constant times the molality. We know the cryoscopic constant that is minus 1.86 and then the molality here is 3.47 so basically you just need to multiply 347 by 186 so 7 6 are 42, 4 6 is 24 plus 4 is 28, 18 plus 2 is 20, 7 8 are 56, 4 8 are 32 plus 5 is 37 so then 3 8 so 24 plus 3 is 27 2 7 7 6 0 and then finally you have 7 4 3 so 2 and then 8 plus 6 is 14 then you have 15 here So then that's 2 plus 1, 3, plus 7 is 10, plus 4 is 14, 3, 3, 6. So, <clears throat> so now you got the product, you just need to divide it by 10 raised to 4. So you will get 6.4542, and then it goes on. So you get approximately 6.45, but because my, but, well, because the boloscopic const, but because the cryoscopic constant was negative so you must add a minus here too so the value of delta tf is minus 6.45 degrees celsius 
So if you were to look at the following options, you can see that option D, minus 6.45 degrees Celsius, is the correct answer. <clears throat> Let's look at this question. Which one of the following removes temporary hardness of water? Is it A, slate lime, B, plaster of Paris, C, Epsom, B, D, hydrolith? <clears throat> so temporary hardness. What causes temporary hardness in water? It is caused due to the bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium. So we need to remove these bicarbonates and that is done using the Clark's process. So in Clark's process, calcium hydroxide, so the hydroxide of the same, you know, metal is used to remove the bicarbonates from the water and then precipitate them as their carbonates. So as you can see in case of calcium, you have calcium hydroxide plus calcium bicarbonate. <clears throat> it's actually two. Calcium bicarbonate gives calcium carbonate that is lime water and H2O. So calcium carbonate is precipitated. You get pure water out of here. So the hydroxide of the same metal that is calcium or magnesium is used to remove the bicarbonates. And you know what is calcium, calcium hydroxide? Calcium hydroxide is the same thing as slaked lime. So option A is the correct option. Option B, plaster of Paris is incorrect because this is calcium sulfate, hemihydrate. Magnesium sulfate makes Epsom, so that is incorrect. Hydrolith is also incorrect. Let's look at this question. The accompanying figure depicts a change in concentration of species A and B for the reaction A to B as a function of time. What does the point of intersection between the two curves represent? So you have concentration versus time curve here for two species A and B. So species B increases and then species A decreases. So at this point where they intersect, it is the half of the concentration measurement. So concentration of both, you know, species A and species B are the same. So they are uh, half of what they used to be. So therefore, the time at which the concentration of both species A and species B becomes half will be represented as half-life or T-half. So therefore, option A, T-half will be the correct option. All of the options are incorrect because for that, the concentration has to change, but during the intersection, concentration is always equal between both species A and B. So therefore, for each species, it will be concentration divided by two. So for that, the time at this stage has to be T-half. Next question. The rate constant of a reaction is given as 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 at 25 degrees Celsius. And it is given as 2.1 into 10 raised to minus 2 at 60 degrees Celsius. You need to find the activation energy of this, um, of this situation. So over here you have the initial temperature as 25 degrees Celsius, which when you add with 273, you get 298 degrees Kelvin. And then the final temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. So when you add 273, you get 333 degrees Kelvin. Now, how do we find out the activation energy? The best way to do so is to use the Arrhenius equation. So one of the forms of the Arrhenius equation is log K equals minus Ea divided by 2.303 RT. 
So for two temperatures, T initial and T final, and rate constants K1 and K2, the Arrhenius equation goes like this, log of K2 by K1 equals energy of activation divided by 2.303 R, and then you will get 1 by T1, T initial minus 1 by T final. Now actually this has to be 1 by T final minus 1 by T initial, but then the minus sign before the activation energy was transferred to the bracket, causing the change in order. Now, in our options, you can see that 2.303 does not exist, like it is not mentioned in any of the given options. So we have to convert this logarithm into a logarithm with natural base. So therefore, log with the base E, K2 by K1, is equal to energy of activation divided by R, and then in the bracket, it's T2 minus T1 divided by T1, T2. So let's put in the values of the temperatures here and also the rate constants. So rate constant for the second temperature is 2.1 into 10 raised to minus 2. And for the first temperature, it is 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 3. On the right hand side, you have energy of activation divided by R, and then you apply the temperature here. It's 333 minus 298 divided by 333 into 298. So 333 minus 298, 13 minus 8 gives you 5, 12 minus 9 gives you 3, and 2 minus 2 gives you 0, so that's 35. So you have EA divided by R times 35 divided by 333 into 298. Now normally we would have to multiply these two, you have to multiply the denominator together, but over here we don't need to do that because 298 times 333 is mentioned, is given by itself in some of the options. So now what do we do? We have all the values put in. So 2.1 divided by, so 10 raised to minus 2 and 10 raised to minus 3 cancel each other out. So you get a 10 raised to minus 1 in the denominator. I mean, you get, basically you get uh, 10 raised to minus 1 in the denominator. So you can put that in, on top. So that becomes a 10. So log to the base E, 21 divided by 1.5 is the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, it's EA divided by R times 35 divided by 333 into 298. Now at this point, you just rearrange this equation in terms of activation energy. So activation energy is equal to log to R times log to the base E, 21 divided by 1.5 times 333 into 298 divided by 35. So this is the correct expression for the energy of activation in this given scenario. So if you were to look at our options, you can see that option B is the correct option. As you can see, the multiplication is 298 times 333, denominator is 35, you have R, you have log to the base E, you also have 21 divided by 1.5. So therefore, option B is the correct option for finding the activation energy in this question. Now, let's look at another question. Beryllium shows diagonal relationship with aluminum. Which one of the following similarities is incorrect? Now, <clears throat> option A says beryllium forms beryllates and aluminum forms aluminates. So that is true because beryllates, the ion is BeO2 2 minus and aluminates are AlO2 minus. 
So therefore, beryllium does form beryllates and aluminum does form aluminate. So option A is correct. But here we need to find the incorrect statement. So it's given as wrong. So what about another option here? Maybe D, for example. Beryllium carbide like aluminum carbide yields methane on hydrolysis. So if you have Al4C3 plus 3H2O, then you get AlOH thrice plus 3CH4 or something similar. So we just we'll just write the bare skeleton equation in order to avoid being wrong. So as you can see, methane is being released on hydrolysis. So this statement is correct. So therefore, option D has to be wrong because we need to find the incorrect statement. Beryllium like aluminum is rendered passive by HNO3. The statement is also true because it f they form their oxides. So when they form an oxide layer, beryllium and aluminum both have the property of being inert when the oxide layer is formed. So therefore at that time they are rendered passive by HNO3 because it get oxidized to aluminum oxide. So option C is also incorrect because the statement given in option C is the true statement. So therefore the only false statement here is option B, beryllium hydroxide like aluminum hydroxide is basic. The problem here is that they are not basic. They are amphoteric, which means they react with both acids and bases. So therefore option B is an incorrect statement and since we need to find the incorrect statement here that option is the correct one that's the most appropriate option let's look at another question this is the next one a graph is plotted between log k and 1 by t for calculation of activation energy we need to find the correct plot is it option a option b option c or option d and in order to solve this, we need the Arrhenius equation again. So the original form of the Arrhenius equation is K equals A e raised to minus E A by R T. So when we take log on both sides, you get log K equals log A minus EA divided by 2.303R into 1 by T. So basically log of E is 1. So log of E raised to something will be that in that index itself. So over here you have the equation that is similar to y equals mx plus c. So m is the slope. And since the slope here is Ea div minus of Ea divided by minus of Ea divided by 2.303R, so therefore the slope here is also negative. So the only option here with a straight graph and a negative slope is option B. So here log k versus 1 by t, the graph is downwards. So it's the straight graph, but then since its slope is negative, it's going downwards. Option A is incorrect. For that, the slope has to be upwards. Option C and D are incorrect because the equation that we got is the equation for a linear graph and not for other kinds of curved graphs. So option B is the correct option. And we found out the plot. We, we found out the correct plot by using the Arrhenius equation. Now, this is the final question for this episode. Clathrates are non-stoichiometric compounds, complex compounds, interstitial compounds, ionic compounds. What exactly are clathrates? Clathrates are also known as caged compounds. And these caged compounds consist of noble gases getting trapped between molecules 
of a compound. For example, in cavities. So an example for a clath rate is argon, xenon, or krypton present with beta quinol. So that is an example for a clath rate. So as you can see, these clath rates are formed by accident, and so therefore they are not usually repeatable, so they are non-stoichiometric compounds. Option A is the correct option. An example for a complex compound is um, potassium tetrachloroate, which in this case is KAUCl4. Interstitial compounds include steel, where the carbon atom sits between the iron lattice, but it's kept there, and it's not happening by accident. So option B and C are incorrect. Option D, ionic compounds. Best example I can give you is for common salt, NaCl, formed by ions not formed due to getting trapped, noble gases getting trapped. So therefore, option A, non stoichiometric compounds, is the correct answer for identifying which type of compounds are clath rates. Clath rates are caged compounds where noble gases get trapped between molecules of a compound in their cavities. So that concludes this episode of BitSat Practice. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel that is Brain Blitz Audios. You can also hit the notifications button in the description down below, I mean in the video down below so that you can get more of our notifications regarding our latest content. If you want to access the playlist for BitSat Practice, the link for the playlist is available in the description down below. You just need to click on it and you'll get, you'll get redirected to our other content regarding BitSat. So that concludes this episode. We, we hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments section down below. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.